Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to describing yet more of the new functions that Game Maker has just dumped on us in November of 2022. So for those unaware, starting in the November of 2022 beta versions of Game Maker, a whole host of new string related functions has been added. Some of them are pretty self-explanatory, uh, some of them I have already described in another video, and some of them I would like to talk about now, and those are going to be the string splitting related functions. So, uh, string split was added to Game Maker starting in version 2022.1100.0.248. That is uh, one of the beta versions for November of 2022. Um, if you're watching this video in the future, as long as you're on version uh, 2022.11 or later, then the string splitting functions will be available to you. So let's get into how this works. So string splitting is something that is built into a lot of other uh, more fully featured programming languages, JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, Java. If there is a mainstream programming language out there in the modern day, it probably has some functions related to splitting strings. Uh, GameMaker was a little bit late to that party and only gained that ability approximately this week. And as a result, writing your own string splitting function has kind of become a bit of a uh, a common occurrence for some people, uh, writing your own string splitting function has sort of become a uh, common bit of code that you often bring between different projects. Anyway, let's start off with some text. So I can save our text is going to be equal to the quick brown fox jumped over me. A uh, classic uh, typography, like typography uh, testing uh, sentence, although I don't believe that my version actually uses the letter G, uh, so it won't... Uh, won't have the advantage of using every letter in the alphabet, but that's okay. So if I were to call uh, string underscore split, uh, this function is going to have a couple arguments. I can I need to get used to being able to mouse over these functions to show what the argument list is and even this, the descriptions. Um, the first argument is going to be the string that you want to split. And the second argument is going to be the delimiter. And the delimiter is going to be the character that you want to uh, break the string apart around. So if I were to if I were to make the delimiter an empty space character, uh, that is going to cause the string split function to take this text and separate it into individual words, uh, often known in in computer programming as in split, splitting the string into tokens. Each token is going to be the bit of text between the uh, between the delimiter. So it's going to be, the string is going to be broken into pieces every time it sees a space character. Um, so I can call this var results, I think, that's good enough. And if I were to show debug message the results, and I'm going to use show debug message now instead of just show message because I want it to uh, print it out in the console, um, because I think that'll be easier to see in this case. Uh, we can see what it gives us, and if this works correctly, it should uh, be an array of individual words, uh, be, that being the quick brown fox jumped over and me. And that'll be uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements in the array containing those words. And if I were to, uh, can I, can I make this text bigger? Hang on. All right, that's as big as Game Maker is gonna let me make the text down here. But we do indeed have an array of seven elements, uh, those elements being each word. So that's pretty nice. Common uses for this include things such as processing user input. If a user types in a sentence and you want to break the sentence apart into words like this, uh, you might use a string splitting function. Um, things such as reading data from a file. If you try to write an OBJ parser, um, OBJ 3D model files are stored uh, with individual lines of text and they have numbers separated by spaces. And sometimes you would like to read those lines of text and separate the uh, separate each of the numbers in a line into uh, tokens like this. You can tokenize the, uh, the line. Uh, maybe you want to read an entire file into memory at once using the buffer load function and you want to break it around a new line, uh, in which case you would, um, you would use the new line character as the delimiter like this. Uh, there's a couple of good uses for this sort of thing. Now, let's see, what do I want to do next? So there are a handful of, uh, of optional arguments that the string split function can take. Uh, you can see them in the code help as I mouse over it here. Uh, I guess I'll go in order. So the remove empty argument, uh, if you have, for example, an empty, um, an empty token. So let's say that you have two spaces in the string right here. Uh, by default, the way that the string split function will work is uh, it will, 
instead of having an array of uh, seven tokens, instead of having an array of seven words returned here, it would instead return an array of nine values, and that will include seven words and two empty strings in the middle. And you may or may not want that. I guess I'll run the game now to show uh, how that works. Uh, if I go and this is why I don't like using show debug message just for most of these examples because I have to scroll up to find the uh, the answer um, You can see that we do have an array of nine values and that does include two empty string values Which may or may not be what you want depending on what you're trying to do if you would like to automatically remove Those empty values you can set remove empty to true and that will cause the string split function to skip over Empty values like this and we're back to seven tokens uh, containing these seven words in the sentence, and the uh, the empty strings are being ignored. And the next optional argument is the max number of splits. So for any reason, let's say that you only want the uh, the first um, three tokens to be separated in the string. Uh, we can make the number of max splits in the uh, that the uh, string split function will do three, and that will cause us to get an array of three values here: the quick, and then brown fox jumped over me all in one string as the third token. And uh, once again, depending on what you're trying to do with the string, uh, that may or may not be relevant. That may or may not be something that you want. The quick and then brown fox jumped over me as the, uh, the last token there. Now, so far in my examples, uh, the delimiter that we've been splitting around has only been a single character and that does include the new line, the, the backslash N that I uh, cited briefly, this is counted as a single character. The uh, backslash isn't really there. It just indicates to the compiler that this is supposed to be a special value. Um, however, the delimiter can be a, um, it can be a string containing more than one characters. And if I were to go with a slightly different example, let's go with a one fish, blue fish, red fish, blue fish. I don't think I got that nursery rhyme right. Dr. Seuss, I have failed you. Um, if you had this text over here and you wanted to split this text around, uh, for example, the word fish, uh, this will work. This is going to work as intended. Uh, as a result, we're going to get one and then comma two, and there's going to be spaces in here, and then comma red and then comma blue. And if I were to run this example and look down in the console, uh, we have and this is a little bit hard to read because the uh, the commas are also like part of the array being printed out. But uh, oh yes, the last uh, the last token is just blue fish because I set the max splits set to three so that the last one kind of kind of was ignored. Uh, there we go. One, two, red, blue is what we got when we try to split around the word fish. And this begs the question of. Uh, whether or not the, splings, the string split function supports regex. Um, unfortunately, it does not. Uh, I say unfortunately, uh, some people, depending on your point of view, how much you like regex, that could be a good thing. However, I suppose if you did want to, uh, if you did want to split the string around any vowel, uh, there is an extended version of the string split function. And this will, instead of taking a single string as a delimiter, this will allow you to pass in an array of strings as a delimiter. And if, for example, we, for whatever reason, wanted to utterly mangle the sentence and split it around any, any vowel, uh, we could pass in an array containing A, E, I, O, and U. And if I were to run this, we are going to see that this array has been split into a bunch of pieces that is just utterly, like, unpronounceable. I guess that's kind of the point of removing vowels. And each of the splits occurred where a, uh, a vowel, or at least a lowercase vowel, was found in the sentence. And by doing this, you can have uh, the string be split around uh, multiple delimiters. If you wanted a uh, maybe more realistic example of where this would be used, uh, let's say that maybe you had something like an email address and you want to split it into parts. So let's say that you had some email address that was like some random guy at wizardux.com, uh, you could break this into pieces around the at symbol and the dot and the, uh, the period. And this would, uh, this would break this name, this would break this address into uh, three parts. Basically the username, the domain, and the, uh, the top level domain. 
Although I think some email hosts actually just allow you to like insert uh, periods into the uh, the username like this, and they'll be ignored. So that might not be the best example. So now let's talk about the, in a lot of ways, the opposite of the string split function. And that is going to be string join. And this function is going to do very much the opposite of string split. And instead of taking an existing string and breaking it into pieces, string join is going to take pieces of a string and concatenate them together um, around the delimiter. So uh, let's say that we could, for the time being, make our delimiter that we're going to join strings with a comma followed by a... Um, a space and uh, string join is variadic, so you can just type as many um, as many function arguments into it as you want, and it will just connect them all. It will concatenate them all using this delimiter in between them. Uh, however, to make things a little bit more interesting, let me actually uh, write out some actual words that you might want to join together in different ways. I really like piano man. Okay, shut up. So if I were to join these uh, four lines of Piano Man together using the comma delimiter, and if I were to take the result of that, save it to that variable and print it out, uh, we are going to see that we are going to get a single string. And I uh, probably should make sure the variable names are both the same in both cases. Uh, if I were to take that and join it together, we can see that we've now got a single string. Uh, which has the four lines separated by a uh, comma over there and a space. Uh, you could, of course, take this a step further and you could join them together around a new line character and uh, Game Maker should be able to print that out all right. Um, all right, here we go. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. I never want to sing that again in my entire life. And there is also a somewhat simpler version of string join, which is uh, going to be string concatenate, concatenate, concat. All right, it's just concat, it's not spelled out the whole way, which is probably good because nobody knows how to spell that. And string concatenate would instead uh, simply fuse the inputs together without uh, giving you the option to um, separate them with any delimiter of any kind. Uh, basically, this is going to be the equivalent of string join with an empty string as the delimiter. Uh, if I were to comment this out and say if our result equals this instead, uh, we're going to see the uh, the lines of Piano Man joined together. Where are you? You are over here. And we're not going to have any spaces or new lines or anything uh, between these uh, lines, which occasionally can be useful. Um, generally, you don't you know deal with so much text in a game that you would have to worry about having a nice way to concatenate them together like this. That is like different than just using the plus operator, uh, which is still an option. But, well, it is an option. And lastly, uh, there are extended versions of string join and string concat. So if you had, instead of individual strings that you're passing into the variadic function, if you had something like of our um, lines is going to be an array of strings, or uh, any values, I suppose, is the other reason that you might want to do this. You don't have to bother using the string function to cast a number to a string like this. And if you wanted to join them together with, uh, for example, string join extended, uh, you could pass in the line lines array as the second argument to the string join extended function, and you could uh, you could have every line in this array just concatenated together. And this is probably more useful than the like string ext, uh, like the extended version of just the regular string function that I talked about in the last video because uh, I could definitely see someone having an array of strings and wanting to join them together nicely like this uh, more often than they um, might have like a long array of um, like string format inputs. Uh, regardless, I can run this. This is going to jam all those lines together or it won't jam them together. It'll uh, put them in the same string separated by a new line. And that's the string join extended function. And uh, lastly, string cat extended also exists, but I think if you've made it this far into the video, you can probably guess how that works. So that's it. Uh, that is string splitting and joining. Uh, this is, as it happens, another video that I've had on my potential future Game Maker videos list for a very long time, and I just procrastinated my way into uh, Yo-Yo Games just adding it to the engine full stop. 
My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I will not be posting this code on uh, GitHub this time. It is a simple computer science demo. I don't really see the point of uploading this entire project. I tried to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game. At least that's the idea. Uh, the November 2022 Game Maker update has thrown a lot of new material at me, which has sort of thrown a wrench in things. Regardless, if anything that I said appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found this useful. If you're one of the people who carries around a string split function between every single project you make, hopefully now you just don't have to anymore. It's always nice to have these things built into the engine, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Guidry, Jonathan Bernardez, Kiexi, Sindra Larson, Square Crowd, The Oz, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.